this one out somewhere in Central Park and my legs <laughs> completely stopped working. But um, I am really happy, I'm filled with a, a big sense of pride in, in finishing that and being able to call myself a marathoner and I'll definitely be geeking out with this thing on all day. <laughs> Mayor, your comments? Well, it's always great to be in New York, and uh, congratulations to the New Yorker runners on a wonderful event with a perfect day, and the results speak. I mean, the results was phenomenal. We have the best runners in the world here, and you know, I went for it. You know, I always run to win, and get the best out of myself. So to run a PR at 36 with new shoes, stay here, score run, I couldn't be happier. And congratulations to those who finished the podium. Congratulations to the people who did their debut. And uh, it's just fabulous day in New York. Uh, home away. Oh, my, my second home, basically. And uh, I love it. I uh, love being here. And uh, look forward to uh, 68, day, 68, days, 68 days and a half. So <laughs> I'm very excited and uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, once it got bro broken up, I kind of conserved myself. I have to stop, unfortunately. And, do a couple puking and uh, moved on and, and finish. And I'd love to be able to do that in PR. I'm very delighted to be here. And we're uh, uh, joined by uh, Bobby Curtis, another member of our um, uh, freshman class of uh, 2011. 15th place, uh, 216.46. Yep. Um, <clears throat> ladies had some interesting thoughts about running their first marathon. How about yourself? Yeah, um, it was a, a good marathon until about 21 miles for me. Um, I was running about five minute mile pace until then. And uh, then I got a little tired and thought, all right, I'll slow it down to 515 pace. But in actuality, that was slowing down to 530 pace. Then when I realized I was running 530 pace, I was like, all right, let's slow down to six minute pace. And I was actually seven minute pace. <laughs> and uh, each mile split I ran by, the news was worse and worse. And uh, so yeah, it was, it was a rough, Rough four, last four miles for me. All right, we'll open it up for uh, for uh, questions. We'll start here, um, Amby, and then we'll go to John Powers. Uh, Amby, if, yep, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Meb, you described it as a perfect day, and certainly the performances were, were quite astonishing. But it's not a perfect day when you have to stop and puke or whatever euphemism. Um, what, what happened? Tell us a little bit more as graphically as you'd like. <laughs> So basically, you know, put myself with those guys that have run 205s and 203s and 204. I was one of the slowest guys, but I was having a great time. Just to be able to wear that new uniform, New York Athletic Club, and people were cheering me, go USA, go MED. And it was, you know, we're not going to win every time we get there, unless you, you know, got from one Boston and one here. But um, it's just. You know, when I was going through good patches and bad patches, and when it happened with bad patches, and I had to stop, and Garib, and the other guy who was ahead of him just kind of got away from me, and ran by myself, most of the way, and still digging deep. So I said, even if I have to walk, I'll get there, because a lot of people have invested in me to be able to have a good day and be able to perform, and I did that. Where, where was the patch? Yeah. The bad patch was, uh, about 22 is when I stopped right in the Central Park and not a pretty sight because you got people on the left, people on the right, just came in, kind of like paused and all of a sudden when I start running again, uh, they start cheering. So I just kind of dig deep and uh, you know, that's what New York is all about, to be able to be, you know, it's not always about winning, it's just getting the best out of yourself. They were very happy for me as I Can you tell us about the point in the race, which was before then when things really split up? Maybe it was 30K or so? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just about 30K or so, they made a move, and like I said, it was a 30K drink that I had, and it didn't go, it didn't settle down as it should, and the headers were fine, but maybe we, because we picked up the pace, and of course we just stopped, that stop, and you know, we just gotta stop and take care of business, and, but I'm always uh, determined to do the best that I can, and that's why, even if I have to walk, I don't care, I'll do it. People ask me before press conferences, do you ever think about the 69 days for the trials? I'm thinking about today. The rest will take care of itself. I believe uh, John Towers from the Thanks, Boston. Uh, and after I dropped you one in Boston, there was a lot of talk about the 20302 wasn't a really legitimate time. There was a win. It's a different course. You've run Boston, you've run here. Uh, how do you put his performance today up with uh, whether that might make him? 
record holder type person, given how well they performed with this deal? So both New York and Boston are tough purchase. I think New York is at the beginning of the bridges, but when you go to a Harbor Hill and you see those hills in front of you, like, wow, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have to climb, and you got back to back three, three hills, and to run that fast, it's pretty incredible. Um, people ask, is it two hour possible? Of course it is. I mean, it's gonna be getting closer and closer, and hopefully we can see it soon because you want to see people develop and do well. And it's not often the guy that won Boston and New York he goes, "You're a role model." He just said that to me. I'm like, you know, show by lead by example. It's work together and things like that. So it's a team effort, and we help each other. And you know, whoever has a better day will succeed. Yeah, um, you're right here, Catherine. We've been doing a very similar uh, training with Coach Larson. And, you know, we have a Mammoth Track Lab that, uh, you know, Terrence is a little bit talk to him about uh, nutrition, but it's just staying healthy. If I can stay healthy, I can train. If I can churn, I can perform. And that's the secret. There's it? one foot after another. It's that simple. But you know, we change a little bit about my nutrition. Uh, to take more protein instead of just carbohydrate. But uh, you know, my wife says, you know, I can't see you anymore because I'm too thin. <laughs> but, you know, those guys, everybody else are thinner. I mean, I'm light as I've been. I'm 122 and, or a little under. And, uh, you know, a five, a little over five and a five, five. So it's just it's the key to stay healthy. And I've been training 126, 125 miles. I've run 26 and a half miles twice on my skaters. Pro speed, and uh, this is it's just you know, for the first time in 14 years, I'm not even wearing orthotics. That's different, you know, because of the midfoot strike, it allows me to propel forward versus by heel strike. I have room to go to the left or to the right, and Coach Larson and I have been looking at my mechanics, and uh, so it's just nutrition is important. I've been the last three months, I've been sleeping, eating, and, and breathing, running because of my wife sacrifice with the kids and the coaches and my brother Howie and with Asian. So it was a tough year for me to start with. I went out shoe without shoe contract for eight months as a New York champion and then silver medalist. That's, that shouldn't happen, but I'm so happy to be with the skaters and uh, to invest in me and New York Athletic and others, my generation you can, Power Sony, the list goes on, but I hope to represent the best that I can. That's what I've been doing for the last since high school, best, best run that I could be in high school, best run I could be in college, and the best run I could be up as a professional, and the results have been great, and I'm so satisfied with my career. If I can make another Olympic team, I'll be thrilled, so my wife and daughters and family can go. But if not, I got a silver medal. It was Jake. Jake. Bobby. Sorry. Bobby, what did you learn about yourself in your first marathon, and what will you do differently next time? <clears throat> Uh, I guess, uh, I mean, I knew that it was possible going in that, you know, people have a, a crisis moment, you know, towards the later stages of the race, and, um, you know, being, it was my first one, I knew that was possible, so, um, I mean, I, I just learned something that I already knew, that not everyone who runs well on the track or over a half marathon, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to run well in a marathon, so I'm not discouraged in any way, I mean, I, I didn't run great, but I, I finished, and I was out there, you know, running five minute miles for a while. So, um, you know, I'll definitely give it another try. And, um, you know, I have a, a little bit of a newfound respect for this course. I mean, there are a lot of hills and bridges, but, uh, you know, overall, it was a good experience. I'm gonna ask the same question to uh, both of the ladies. Uh, you know, uh, uh, will you come back to it, um, you know, or one and done? Um. The reason I'm here is because ever since I started running, I wanted to be a marathoner. And um, I didn't know if I was going to be good at it, or I didn't know anything about marathon running. Um, I just can't, you know, been chipping away at the block for as long as I've been running. And this has been the goal. This has been the dream. So I definitely want to run another marathon. And um, I learned that no matter how hard it gets, no matter how hard life gets, you just got to keep moving. You know, you might not be going at the pace you wanted to. You might be feeling horrible, but you're still making progress. And that's, that's all you need to do to finish the race. 
Um, I think one thing I learned about myself, which was part of the reason I did it, I, I wanted to test my will and my toughness. And uh, I figured there'd be a good chance that things would get rough for me at the end of this race, coming from the 5K, but I tried to just stay positive. And there was a moment where I thought, maybe, maybe I'm gonna get away with this. <laughs> I still feel pretty good. <laughs> but then, yeah, not so much. Um, I think that you can dig into surprisingly deep places for fuel. That's one thing I learned. <laughs> like maybe six days ago with dinner, uh, for example, um, around mile 25. <laughs> I do like it though. I like the challenge, even the parts that were terrible were uh, just such a test. They were they bring you to a place I, that I don't know what else can can match that, um, and it just breaks you down. It's like almost like you get a little sneak peek of hell or something, <laughs> and then. Uh, but you know you're gonna be okay. <laughs> so yeah, I, I like that about it. I like challenges. I'm not sure anybody's ever called New York uh, race course hell. It's <laughs> uh, my own personal hell. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're gonna go here to Joe, right here in the front. And this question is for Med and Molly. Uh, now that you've gotten through this race, how do you plan to approach the next 68 days to the trials? I think recovery is key, you know, like the first thing I did when I crossed the finish line was trying to get, you know, recovery fuel in me and um, rehydrate and re you know, replenish. Um, and I think, the, you know, the last thing I want to do is jump into training too quickly, but at the same time, make sure I'm 100% ready for the trials. So just take it one day at a time and listen to my body and do whatever I can to get to the starting line as good as possible. So you, you, you are committed to running? Yeah, I, I didn't want to think about it until after today because New York took everything I have. But yeah, now that I'm done, yep, on to the next marathon. Yep. Just like Molly said, it's just you got to recover, you got to listen to the body. And Coach Larson and I have talked about maybe jog in three days or four days, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just to see if there's any injuries that we need to pay attention to. But it's the same position I was in 2004, and I just ran in my best time even though it's six years or seven years later. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited. And we've, been, we've been doing the same training. I'm not giving my go away. I don't, I don't tweet a lot about my uh, training just because, you know, I don't want to give others the clue. And, uh, but it's just going to go back to the trainer log, which Lars is very, de very detailed on what he writes or what I've done. I have a trainer log that goes to, back to 1993. And uh, look at those. I've been running for 21 years, so all I gotta be is healthy, and you know that day hopefully will be another good day like this, and you know we'll make the teams first as good as the third on that day. So I hope to represent our country the best that I can. Hope to find one and make the team. Uh, just a just a little historical note, um, and maybe it's it, it'll uh, it'll be a good note for uh, Meb. Um, it was 70 days from Athens to New York, and it is 70 days from today to uh, Houston. Uh, um, over here, Weldon, and then we'll go to Sean. Uh, two questions. One, Molly, uh, I, who's coaching you now? I know you're no longer in the Hansons program, so I'm just curious as to who's coaching you. And then for Bobby, is there any chance you're going to be at the Olympic Marathon? Um, my coach right now is Mark Hadley. He's based out of Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I've been working with him since about mid-August. Um, it's been a great partnership. Um, he's very easy to communicate with, and his training seems to fit um, my, the type of training I need perfectly. So it's definitely been a great match. I'm still in Michigan training um, until until further notice. Yeah, I, w I won't be doing the marathon trials. Um, I think I thought there was maybe like you know a one percent chance I would if I if I came out and really you know excelled at the marathon and um, you know had the confidence to give it a go, and it would have been. You know, foolish if I'd run so well that I didn't even try. So, um, you know, given how things went today, um, I think the, the 10K is my best chance, so I got to focus exclusively on that. Uh, Sean? I have a question for Mint. Uh, Mint, 21 years of running. Yeah. And it's kind of amazing. It's almost half of that is now is marathon. And one of, the, one of the things you have to deal with as a veteran runner is while, shall we say, the skill set of your speed gears are fading, you have great experience. And so one of the things as a veteran marathoner, you can tap the experience not only for training, but in racing. Can you tell us how that helped you? And also, did it help you cope at all with these splits like you've never seen before in a race? Yeah, today was 
very good indicator of what a split side is and how much splits on my watch. And uh, a lot of 443s, a lot, of, quite a bit of 439s, 441s, and uh, till the of the incident, I had, I had, that was my source mile, 530, 530, and the rest of I mean, the end went strong finish. And once I realized I'm not gonna win, you know what? I'm gonna keep going, but protect my place and finish strong. And when you finish strong in the marathon, you can recover faster. And before that, the key to success is preparation. We've done very well to prepare for this. We over, went over 25 plus miles a few times, three, three, four times. And I recovered very well from Athens. I walk normal, I just got maybe a few blisters, but that's normal for marathon. Other than that, you know, it's just, and then we coached larger night with a lot of 400 meter repeats, 800 meter repeats. I'm still the, the 10K that I used to do. It just makes a lot of things easier, and I try to not avoid those. And, the key is recover, stay healthy, and maintain this fitness. Nothing, nothing easy. One final question uh, for the ladies, at, uh, at, for uh, both the ladies and the uh, gentlemen. I was um, um, remiss to say that we also had um, Ed Moran finish tenth um, this year. Uh, so that's uh, and Ed finished in two eleven forty six. So uh, that's uh, two men, in, two U.S. men in the top ten. Three U.S. men in the top 15. Any other questions um, for any of our, uh, any of the Americans? Oh. Thank you. Uh, thank you.